get more perspective and really make sure that you make a great educated decision. You've already trialed it. You know what you're doing and you're going to pursue and achieve every single one of your dreams. Hi, my name is Devin. Today I own several multi-million dollar companies. We started with $5,000 in a credit card. I don't know the easy way. I only know the hard way. Hey everyone, welcome to the Whiteboard Entrepreneur Podcast, where I give straightforward advice to fuel the entrepreneur in all of us. Today, I want to talk about a very common subject that people talk to me all the time about, and they're and basically they're like, "Hey, Devin, I'm thinking about leaving my job and starting this company, this starting this entrepreneurial adventure, start you know chasing after this dream that I have. What do you think, and what are the things that I should consider?" Well, first off. I'm kind of a wrong person to ask because I'm like, I'm very, you know, optimistic and I really believe that you can make anything happen if it's what you're called to do and you're real willing to work really hard. Um, it might take her, it will probably take longer than you thought. It will probably be harder than you ever thought, right? You'll probably make less than you thought originally, right? So all of these things are kind of negatives, but I'm still going to be a cheerleader for you and tell you, I believe you can do it. But I do think there are things that are super important to consider before you make that jump. And I want to talk about those right now. And I think these are super important, right? And so a lot of people right now that are listening are probably right on this edge of like, oh man, you have an idea, you're excited about it, but like, man, what, what should I be concerned about? What are things to consider? What are the reasons to do it? What are the reasons not to do it? And so I'm going to tell you some stuff that I, this is not an inclusive list, but this is some stuff I was reading about the other day. I added some notes to it and, and I really think this will be helpful to help you begin to unpack and process this in your own mind before you go and take this leap of faith, because it is, it's a leap of faith. It's going to be very exciting, very scary, just like standing on the into that high dive when you're, you know, an eight year old kid like that, that water is a long way down. It looks cold and it's scary. Well, all of that is probably true. So let me give you some things to consider and to mull over in your head. And the first thing I would tell you, and one of the most important is really understanding with your family, like they need to understand truly and believe and be aligned with what you're going into, right? So they need to understand all of the potential goodness of why you're doing this, but they also really need to understand all of the implications and everything that you're about to do complete and total full transparency. And this is very important because I've known, known people that have gone and done this adventure, pursued this dream, and neglected to tell their spouse that they were pulling the money out of the 401k. Neglected to tell the spouse that that line of credit or that credit card that they had and that cash reserves that they had went away and they were now operating off of a line of credit on their home equity, right? Uh, neglected to tell their spouse that, oh my gosh, by the way, this means I'm going to be traveling, you know, half the year. Neglected to tell their spouse that, oh, by the way, this means we're going to need to move states, pull the kids out of school and go and, you know, uh, pursue this adventure in, in this other state. That was me. I had to do that. I actually had to leave states, right? When I started my, my company. And, uh, but my wife and I were very, very aligned. I was very transparent with the sacrifices we were going to make. I didn't just tell her all of the amazing things that could happen. And I think you're probably, th a lot of people think to themselves right now, like, oh no, I've had those conversations with my spouse. And I'm like, yeah, but what does that look like? Right? Well, I'm going to tell you a lot of times it looks like you're telling your spouse, yeah, in like four years, I think we're probably going to have a private jet, you know, and then we'll have a live-in nanny and, you know, uh, probably two or three butlers. How many, you know, how many do you think we need? Two butlers, three butlers, right? Like those are the type of conversations I think that a lot of people have. They don't have the you know, the nitty gritty, what if kind of down and dirty, what could happen and what does this look like and what's the impact on our family? And the, one of the last ones is like, I did it when I started my company, I, we had an infant. She was exactly three months old when I started my very first company. And that's important, right? Like if you want to talk about family planning, like you want to think about health insurance, you want to think about, God forbid, something that 
could potentially go wrong during the birth or the pregnancy and stuff. And so really thinking about insurance and all of that stuff, family planning, these are big conversations to have, not to gloss over and just talk about how many butlers you're going to have, right? You've got to talk about the very real hardcore implications that people experience, especially in those first two to five years, right? And I said two to five years because most people are hoping, you know, to become cash flow positive in two years. But that's really if you don't bob and weave and adjust because it could go out to five years plus, right? Like, like you need to really understand the impact on the family. Okay. The next thing I'm going to say is time, right? Like, what is this going to do to your time, right? Because a lot of times we think, well, I'm going to be my own boss, right? That means I get to do whatever I want, whenever I want, right? I'm going to, I'm going to take Friday off and I'm going to be golfing Friday afternoons. I'm going to go in late on Mondays and I'm taking the weekends off. I'm going to take this, you know, during the holidays, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be in Cabo and da, 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 right? Like we have these, these ideas that might be true 20 years from now, but let's be honest in the beginning like you're going to probably put way more hours into this than you ever did working for somebody else. Because guess what? When you worked for someone else, you had a job, right? And that job was pretty defined. You don't have to be the person to take out the trash. You don't have to be the person to do the finances. You don't have to be the person to do the sales. You don't have to be the person to do the marketing. You don't have to be the person to do the pro- or the project management. You don't have to be the person to do the HR. You don't have to be the person to, you know, do product development, all of these different things, right? You're going to do all of those jobs jobs, all of them. In the beginning, you have to understand and do that. Like you're going to have to be the person that returns the angry calls when someone screws up because that, that screw up person was you, right? So your customer service, you have to do it all. So the idea that you're going to have more time on your hands being an entrepreneur versus uh, your current situation probably isn't true. Like you really need to understand the time implications that, that you're uh, and the investment that you're going to put into this. The next thing I'm going to say, and people don't talk about this often, but it's location. It's kind of where you live, right? So there's a few things. One, you might start something. I mentioned this. I think I mentioned this on another podcast is that when I started my company, I ended up having to move my family states, right? So think right now, if you start something, all of a sudden you have to move your family you know, outside of your school district, where are your kids at? Are they in their senior year and you're going to move your kids outside of, uh, to a new school? Like you, so you need to understand there are certain implications, uh, and certain businesses that require location, um, obligations, right? So I have friends right now that live in a location that they don't love. They would much rather move. They would much rather be in a different state, different city, different location, but their business is tied to that location and they're stuck like they are going to work there for the next 10 to 15 years or until they retire like that's where it is and so you have to understand you know what are the location implications of these entrepreneurial dreams and, and am I okay about that and is my spouse okay about that are we going to be okay doing this for the next 30 years in this city in this state with these schools or whatever right these are the things that are very very important that you ask yourself and that you contemplate and consider Uh, The next thing I would say is basic cash flow, right? So not just cash flow for you and your family, right? Not just being able to, you know, make the mortgage, uh, make the insurance payments, make the car payments, you know, be able to pay for, you know, to go on vacation or to buy groceries, not just those cash implications, but the cash implications of your business. Like your business is going to be more like, uh, most likely way more expensive than running your household, right? Your business could have a lease obligation. Your business is going to have insurance. Your business is going to have marketing requirements, pay-per-click, Google, uh, websites, all of these cash implications. Your business is going to consume cash, right? Especially in the beginning. And there's going to be so much cash consumption oftentimes before you make $1. And then after you start making that dollar or that, that money, or maybe 5,000 a month, 10,000 a month, $20,000 a month. Great. You just had 20,000 in sales, but what are your ongoing monthly expenses and how long does it take you to 
cat or collect those twenty thousand dollars in sales versus those expenses are due today. So you have to weigh out your financial obligations of your business and your financial obligations and, and runway for your personal finances as well, and have that planned out because that is going to be consuming. I've seen several businesses that in theory are succeeding, but they run out of financial runway. Like this is so common where people are like, I'm doing great. Like the company is going the right way, but we're out of cash. Like we've done all the hard work, but now we're out of money and I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut down my company. I'm going to take on investors. I'm going to sell my company. My, you know, oh my gosh, I'm going to get foreclosed on my house because literally we've taken a line out of credit on the house. So these are the things, and I'm not telling you these things to be negative. I'm telling you, these are the things to consider before we jump off that high dive, right? The next thing I would tell you is um, miscellaneous expenses and stuff that you didn't quite realize, right? Like, I worked for a company that gave me a company car and it was company car, company gas, company uh, insurance. And I realized like for the longest time, I had such a hard time leaving because I'm like, oh my gosh, that's an expense I never had before. Right. And I also, guess what? Had health insurance. I never had that expense before. So there's these miscellaneous expenses and benefits that you're getting right now. Like I had a 401k program. I had a profit sharing program. I had all of this stuff at my company that is truly like impactful, right? And I'm going to go leave that and, and basically maybe cash out my 401k to start something. And now, and by the way, I don't recommend cashing out your 401k, but now I'm going to go start something that, geez, I don't, you know, I, we have no 401k program there. You know, I don't even have a paycheck yet, right? Much less health insurance and all of these other benefits, you know, paid vacation, all of this stuff that when you're on vacation in Cabo, you still get a paycheck. That doesn't happen when you're self-employed, right? Like these are the things to consider. There's no paid Christmas, right? Like it's on you to make that money. And it's on you to understand the implications of the perhaps miscellaneous benefits and expenses that you, uh, miscellaneous benefits that you had and expenses that you're going to incur that you've never had before. Um, the next thing I'm going to tell you is, is it possible to pilot and try, trial it, right? Because so many people want to just jump in the pool. If you're considering this, if you're really serious about this, Pilot it, trial it, do ride alongs, work with people, take, use your vacation time to actually try something like this out before you jump into the pool, right? There's all kinds of ways for people to trial it, but so many people just want to, you know, put their hand over their eyes and jump, right? Like make it educated, be these, use these thoughtful questions. And the very last thing I'm going to tell you about, and I think this is super important because people don't understand it. But being an entrepreneur, it can be lonely. And I think you have to understand this because I'm a very social person, as you can probably understand. I love people. I like to be around them. I love being a part of a team. I like leading teams. I like being part of teams. I like having friends. I like joking around. I like Monday morning, you know, coffee by the water cooler and joking about, you know, whatever game went on over the weekend, fantasy football. We, it, where I used to work, we had a really great culture. Um, everybody loved working with each other, you know, on Monday morning, we go over fantasy football, you know, on uh, Thursday afternoon, we always had, you know, our Thursday after work, we always went for happy hour. Wednesday and Friday, we always had lunches together. No matter what, we'd meet for lunches. You know, fri on the weekends, we'd hang out together. On Friday afternoon, like the last 30 minutes of the day, we'd play wiffle ball in the office. Just, you know, silly, fun stuff. But I love that. I love the energy of being around people. And I'm going to tell you, those first couple years, I had zero employees. And so I was lonely. Like I miss Thursday happy hour. I missed Friday afternoon wiffle ball. I missed being with my friends and being an entrepreneur can be a very lonely place. Now I actually have employees and we work uh, together and you know, like it's different now, but there was years where like it was a lonely place to be. And I think people need to understand that because you need social outlets or a lot of people really need that. And you have to consider this before you jump into the deep end of the pool. I'm not telling you any of these reasons not to do this, not to pursue your dreams. You know, that's not me. I'm the person here to tell you, listen, the stars are never going to align. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. At some point, you're going to have to take that leap of faith, right? But what I am urging you to do is to consider these different things in your life, evaluate your life, evaluate what we just talked about. Talk to 
other people, get more perspective, and really make sure that you make a great educated decision so that when you are pursuing your dreams, when you do jump off that high dive, both feet, you're doing it alongside your family. You've got a plan. You're excited. You've already trialed it. You know what you're doing and you're going to pursue and achieve every single one of your dreams. I'm Devin. This is the Whiteboard Entrepreneur Podcast and I know this is going to help you.